Greetings and girthy salutations, mate. Welcome to Tech 3D. Apologies for the gig junk recording on the phone and the dreadful audio. Mate, if you want to know why my audio is dreadful, that's why. That's where I record all my videos. Right. This is only going to apply to people who've purchased a GT77 Titan or maybe another MSI laptop. It's not going to apply to the majority of people. But when I did my review of the Titan, I spotted, well, it was one of the few reviewers actually that mentioned that the RAM's not running at the expected frequencies. It's got Samsung OEM RAM in there. It's nothing special, but it's DDR5 rated at 4,800 megatransfers per second. But the Titan's only running at 4,000 out of the box. I've got three Titans here and they're all running at the same 4,000 megahertz uh, on the DDR5. There's no XMP settings in the BIOS either, even on the latest update. Uh, even Intel can't really advise on why that's happening. So I found a solution. Before I show you what the solution is, just as a disclaimer, apologies this is boring, but I don't know what the wider ramifications are of changing these settings. Uh, I've tested some benchmarks afterwards and it's pretty stable, but what else might happen, don't know. Also, it puts an unreasonable one to two minute boot delay on the post time of the laptop after I've changed these settings. Now, I may be able to resolve that with other BIOS tweaks, but it is what it is, right? You just do it at your own risk. So obviously you want to power on and jump into the BIOS. So you want to spam delete as it's powering up, which is a bit of hit and miss. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Right, we're in, good. And then you want to jump into MSI's super secret BIOS for reasons that are absolutely a complete mystery to me and anyone with an ounce of common sense. So you need to press Alt, left Alt, right control, right shift, and F2 all at the same time to get into the advanced BIOS menu. Don't know why, it's ridiculous, but I can't do it with one hand, so hang on. This is the advanced BIOS. You wanna click advanced, then you wanna go down to system agent SA configuration, then you wanna to go to memory configuration, then you wanna go into memory, and then you wanna scroll down until you see memory profile default SPD. Press return on that and change that to custom profile. That doesn't do it. So you wanna you want to press escape, and then you want to scroll down on this menu and you want to change these four settings, right? Frequency limit for mixed 2DP, DDR5, one, two, and then there's one, two, three, four. So change these to 2400, 2400, 2400, and 2400. I've got four sticks of RAM in here. That may appear different if you've got only two sticks. Don't know, but either way, uh, I'll change those. Uh, and that's the frequency limit. Then you want to press escape because that still doesn't do it escape out of that, and then you want to scroll down on the main advanced menu to overclocking performance menu, go into that, and then turn on the overclocking feature to enabled. That should do it, <laughs> it should. I've had mixed results, but we'll give this a shot. Save and exit, save changes and reset, and then commit those setting changes to the BIOS, right? Don't panic at this point. There's gonna be about a four to five minute delay on this reboot, which initially makes you kind of worried because you think you've bricked the laptop by changing things in the BIOS. You shouldn't have done, but the, the weight is what it is. But what you'll you'll hear the fan spin up and then you'll see the power button go from orange to white. It does that once just to troll you into thinking it's going to boot. Then it'll do it a second time about a minute afterwards. So I'll just jump cut to when that's about to happen. There it is. All right, spam, delete again. Okay, then jump back into the super secret BIOS. Remember, it's Alt, Control, Shift, and F2 all at once. And then all you really need to do at this point is verify that it's worked. So you want to go back into the advanced area, system, agent, configuration, memory, and then you should see there that the BIOS is running it at memory frequency 4800 megahertz. Whereas before, uh, I suppose you, you could have checked this beforehand just to verify that it actually was at 4000. Uh, but before we did that, it was at 4,800 megahertz. Now, I've spotted a couple of bizarre things here. Uh, the first one is, when you scroll back down these settings, you can now change these frequency limits to zero, which, according to MSI's absolutely useless little uh, tooltip over the top, that should be set to auto. But if you were to set that at zero in the first instance, it doesn't work. You've got to set it to 2,400, and then you can set it to zero. It'll remain running at 4,800 megahertz. But like I said, at this point, in fact, I'm, doing, I'm going to discard the changes and exit. Just leave that at 2400. But like I said, there's, in some cases, a one to two minute boot delay on getting into the, or running past the BIOS, which, right, I, I don't know if that's 
okay for me personally. I might leave the RAM at stock settings rather than have that boot delay. So what I'll do, I'll just see if it's actually doing it now. So I'll do another reboot. Right, it's just about to reboot. Uh, we're just gonna see if it's gonna delay or whether it's gonna boot straight up. And it will appear we are getting the delay right. So yeah, it's gonna sit like this for about a minute before it gets past the BIOS, before it does the power on self test and then goes into to loading Windows. Whether or not you want to cope with that and have your RAM running at 1400 mega transfers per second or you can't cope with this boot delay, it's entirely up to you. Me personally, I don't think I can be coping with this. I'm gonna probably put the RAM back to stock, but either way, that's the solution for getting <laughs> the RAM at 1400 megahertz. Just, just as a, a word of caution as well, when you update the BIOS in the future, it, it will reset these settings back to stock. So you're gonna to have to do this each time. I don't think you can save BIOS profiles on the Titan either. Whether MSI ever get around to fixing this, if there's even something to be fixed, don't know. But yeah, it's a, it's an absolute nuisance. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna waffle here until it boots on, just so you, just so you know it actually does get past it, and you can see the the rough time it takes to, to power on self test at this point. Uh, right, you can see the white light is flicked on, and there's the MSI logo. So yeah, that's that's the boot time now. It's too much for me. I don't know, maybe there's a setting in the BIOS that will fix it. I haven't dug around the settings of the BIOS to see if there's a setting that'll nullify that delay, but there you go. If you want to enable the XMP on the Titan for some reason, reasons that are a complete mystery to me, that's what you've got to do. So thanks for watching. If it's helpful, drop the video a big fat like. That would be super appreciated. Pieces of the YouTube gods. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Doodles.